What's up, everybody, and welcome to Commander Fridays. Every Friday, we're going to go through and break down a Commander deck, talk about it, live about it, be about it. Maybe we'll learn something about it, but Friday night is all about Commander style here on Magic Redefined. Today, we are going to break down our... Probably one of my favorite decks. It is all about Golos, Tireless Pilgrim. That's so not true. That is the commander, but then Ulamog come and eat him. Yes, today is all about Eldrazi as they come and rule the world and take over everything. As they fight for control of Zendika. I really hope the building bring Aldrazi's back. Please, Wizards of the Coast, if you're watching this, Aldrazi's. Thank you. Thank you. First off, why Golos? So Golos, even though it in of itself is colorless, it has five colors to activate one of its abilities. And what that does is it lets us use all five colors of magic. So even though the Eldrazi spells have Devote and are technically colorless, they still can have those colors for Commander. So I like using Golos as a way to get all five colors, help get a lot of spells that's going to help quickly get out my Eldrazi, and it has a nice little kicker on the bottom where it costs seven, and we can actually put permanents on the battlefield. So one of my favorite parts about Golos is that and its innate ability of entering the battlefield and letting us search for lands. So what am I searching for? I'm searching for my temple, which makes Eldrazi spells cost two less to cast. Because that's just a win-win in my book. And why not have a commander that you can play any land you want when you're trying to win by lands? So let's pull this deck up here and break it down a little bit. You can see we have our Golos Eldrazi deck. Yes, it is all about them tribes, all about them Eldrazi's as they take over the world. So we're going to turn our attention to one thing I was talking about and kind of the biggest point of this deck is the lands. So having our commander as Golos, which is a five color, it lets us use every combination of lands and we're going to need them because we're using all five colors. As you can see with this setup, there are no basic lands. We have 36 and zero basic lands, guys. We really need to focus on getting colors, so each land comes with the special ability of having more than one color associated with it or giving some kind of special ability to have during this Aldrazi deck, kind of like the Runes of Ordinary, which add one and you can put a counter on colorless creature. This obviously can come at an expense. I don't know if you can see at the side here, but we're looking about $500 worth of cards just in this deck. Now, to note, you can build a cheap Eldrazi deck. I personally have a cheaper one where you're getting rid of a lot of these expensive lands and throwing in some basic lands involving wilds. I hope bring this cost down tremendously because some of these lands alone go for 25 bucks. So it's a really good idea to make sure that you're trying to go with your budget and really don't overstep. So as you can see, we have Aldrazi Temple, which you could tap for two if it's for a color spell or activate abilities. And you have Eye of Ujin. This is the spell I was referring to before. Probably one of my favorite cards for this deck. It is a must. You have to go buy it. The colors Aldrazi spells cost you two less to cast. You don't have to tap it for that ability. You always have it so it can stack upon, upon each other and make it really easy. I don't want to spend too much time on lands, but please just note with a Golos deck, you have all five colors. You have a lot of spells that vary in colors. So it's important to make sure that you get as many non-basic lands as possible with ones that can tap for multiple different colors. So you can easily bring out the cards you need. With that being said, I'm actually going to jump right into artifacts. Artifacts are going to go right off of this land theme where we have all these colors now we need to build quickly Eldrazi spells are very expensive that's why Golos is a good commander it lets you put an extra land down 
but I'm also sticking it to a lot of artifacts that let me tap for extra lands. If I have these artifacts that let me tap for extra lands, I can get out my bigger Eldrazi's quicker. And that's the idea. It is all about speed. In a commander game, especially in a one-on-one -on -one or with a three-player match or something like Two-Headed Dragon, you're going to get killed with this deck if you don't get these cards out quickly. You don't have a lot of things, small creatures. You don't have a lot of like cheap spells. Your mana curve is very high. This is a mana curve I actually tried keeping down, and I got three to be the most, but you can see I heavily range here where the four, five, six, sevens, and I even have spells that can be worth up to 13. So our mana curve is very high. Therefore, we need to have a lot of lands and a lot of artifacts that tap for lands. You can get an idea that most of these tap for lands, meaning I can get stuff out quicker. That's what we're trying to do, get things out quicker. Other spells to have in here, because it takes so long to get out these Eldrazi's, you don't want them killed turn one because everyone's going to try to kill them. Don't get me wrong. So having things like Lightning Greaves or Swiftwood Boots, where you can add some sort of protection and give them haste, which is really going to help prevent them from dying the second they come out. Another spell I love, which isn't really usually recommended, is Bulls of Citadel, because it gives you the capability of playing the top card of your library, which one, if you're hurting for lands and doing this, you can get lands out almost every turn. And two, it's worth taking 10 life in a commander game to get Ulamog out. In my personal opinion, if I can get Ulamog who's indestructible right out of the gate for 10 life, I'm doing it every single time. So Bullets of Citadel is a must for me. I know some people don't like it. Maybe you guys have a different opinion. Please let me know but one of my favorite cards. Next, we can drop into the best part of this deck, and that is those Eldrazi's. So as you can see, right off the gate, we almost have every single Eldrazi in here. There's a couple I didn't put in because they aren't really that good and not worth it, and I was better off having non-Eldrazi spells. But we'll get into it. For now, you have your artist in a puzzle. Like you're playing spells with Annihilator. You're playing spells that let you exile target permanents because you're trying to destroy your opponent's board. By the time you get these cards out, your opponent has a really strong board. And you want to make sure, especially with protecting it, that you can start knocking things off their board one by one. I've never won with this deck with all 40 life. I usually win something with under 15 life because I'm getting killed in the beginning. And people know the second I start rolling with an Eldrazi deck, I am rolling straight through them. So important to note, you want to keep cards that have Annihilator, that have Exile Target Permanence. That's really going to help you. Here's another great example, Bane of the Balagan, another one, Exile Permanence. Deceiver of Form, obviously. You get to flip the top card of your library. You have all powerful creatures in here. If you can flip the top card of your library and make your 1-1 Eldrazi Scion tokens a 10-10 Ulamog, why not? That's why I love Deceiver of Form. I'm not going to go into every one of these cards. We're going to swing down here. Elvish Piper, another card that's not heavily recommended in a Eldrazi deck, but I really don't see why. It is a four drop and then tap one to play a creature card from my hand on the battlefield. If I can get Ulamog out or if that betrays for one instead of 10 or 12, why wouldn't I? This card gets killed every single time I play it. Yes, that means I never get to use it, but they're using the kill spells on this creature as opposed to using them later on my bigger Eldrazi's. So maybe it helps save me that way. Something to think about, but this is a must for me in this deck. Then you have all of your big strong Eldrazi's. I do have a 1-1 one -one in here because you want to make sure you have some cards that help you out, at least protect you a little bit. And then Goreclaw, Terror of Qualicisma. Another one. Not an Eldrazi, but creature spells with power four or greater, which is 90% of the Eldrazi's, cost two less. What am I doing? I'm making the cards cheaper. I have gotten 12 drops out for two. Just by all of these artifacts, all these creature spells cost less. This is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get these big, bulky creatures out. 
quick. So this is why I love this card. If that betrays all-time favorite, Annihilator, and steal your opponent's stuff, what's wrong with that? Absolutely nothing. And then we're going to skim on down. Just kind of going all of the Ulamogs. Ulamogs to see this hunger. One of my favorite cards in this game. If you can mill your opponent and scare them with a 10-10 indestructible, pfft, winning. And then, of course, actually, this card is always surprisingly good for me. I can't get over how many even career mana cost most of my opponents have. This pauses games for them, which, yet again, gives me a chance to catch up. Now I want to go into sorceries. All is dust. This is a staple. I mean, this is pretty self-explanatory. You have all colorless. Permanence, you need this card. And a story, don't ask. Chandra's Addiction, another one I added in that's not commonly recommended. Target creature you control is deal damage to its power to each other creature and each opponent. You have giant creatures. I've used this card in multiple scenarios because I have one Eldrazi and I'm playing four of the people and they all have these three threes, four fours, all these different cards. And I'm just basically getting out creature played where my opponent can have six creatures. I have one and this guy has six and this guy is six so this card has a nice good board wipe borders mine now i have an all drazi eat it cultivates a given kindred dominus is another one not commonly recommended but this deck is heavy costing yet again i'm going to clear the board i love it because you can choose a creature type i'm obviously choosing all 10 out of 10 times but a must for me we did artifacts, so we're going to squeeze down to enchantments. Another fun card. I have this card in my deck strictly for fun, no other reason. But it is a six drop. When it is a battlefield, put the top 10 cards of your library into your graveyard. At the beginning of your upkeep, choose a card at random in your graveyard. If it's a creature card, put it in the battlefield. Otherwise, put it in your hand. Guys, think about it. You're playing expensive Aldrazi's. What are your opponents going to do? Kill them. Save all the kill spells for you. They're going to make sure they have just as many as possible to go after you. If I can get my Eldrazi cycling in and out, and all my creatures are good, very few of them are 1-1s, one maybe one or two of them. This is awesome and terrifies people. That's why I love it. Conscription, a colorless card. Enchanted creature gets 10-10 and has Annihilator 2 just board control here a good way to draw cards and Oracle's influence you have all expensive cards like i said this card's good because it helps you either one you can use it as an outlet to search for any eldrazi or two you're adding more lands see what we're doing we have creatures that supplement for lands guys quick it's all about speed rhythm of the wild a must an absolute must put this in your deck right now why anthony i don't get it Non-creature tokens have Riot. Why do I care? No, we don't care about Riot. What we care about is that first sentence. Creature spells you control can't be counted. What did I say? Your opponents are saving all of their kill spells that includes their counters. They are going to counter your 10 drops. You just tapped all your lands for and worked so hard to get out like this because you weren't ready for it. Guys, Rhythm of the Wild, don't let them counter it. Put it in your deck. Don't even ask why. Smothering Tithe, another great way to, guess what? Get treasures, get mana, win-win, great card. And then we're going to move on into instance. Two simple ones, not of this world, and Titan's Presence. Both pretty much do the same thing. One's a counter, one's an exile. They make them very cheap because they're based off of Eldrazi's. Pretty cool to have. And then Planeswalkers. First, the two staples. You need to have Ujin in this deck. If you can spare buying him, he's a little cheaper right now. Buy Ujin, guys. Exile each permanent for mana cost X or less. That's one or more colors that excludes your Eldrazi's. Yet again, you're clearing the board just for your Eldrazi's. That's all you want on the field are your cards. Ujin is a great way to make sure that happens. This card is a must. Next, Ujin the Ineffable. 
Color speech controls cost two less to cast. Two less. What are we doing? We're making things cheaper. It also has some cool up-down abilities, but we're not going to go into it. This card, Nuka Bolas God Pharaoh, is stricken in this deck for my pleasure and nothing more, nothing less. I just think it's a lot of fun to mess with your opponents because it has four different abilities on here. I mean, check this out. So this card is just plain fun. If I'm playing a card that lets me play this card with the right colors, I'm putting it in my deck. This is for me. Your call if you want to make it another Eldrazi or whatever you want to replace it for. But I love having fun with some Nicobolas. You get Nicobolas and Ujin out. <laughs> Hashtag winning right there. Hashtag winning. So I hope that helps break down this deck a little bit. Like I said, this is not really a Golas deck. This is, hey, I have Eldrazi's get out of my way. The important key notes to take away from this is one, you need all the colored lands you can get. The more money you could spend on different kind of lands that aren't basics, the better. Point number two, artifacts. Artifacts that tap for mana. You need different artifacts that tap for mana to get your cards out quicker. Point number three, you need things that make your creature spells cost less. You make them cost less. You have extra mana. You have all the right color lands. What happens? You win. I have gotten Ulamog out on turn three before. I don't know how, but I did it. Another really cool combo. I just want to find guy. Eldrazi Displacer. Okay, let me explain this card real quick. So basically, it's a three drop, so it's pretty cheap. But its spell is what I love right here. So tap three, and you get to blink. Blink meaning card comes in, comes comes out. Card comes in, card comes out for every time we tap three. This triggers and the battlefield triggers. What are you doing? Huh, who would be a really good end to the battlefield trigger? Golos. Yes. You flicker your commander. More lands in, more lands in, more lands in, more lands in. See what you're doing? You're flickering on top of everything else you're doing, guys. Like, how can you lose? Unless, of course, everyone teams up on you and kills you, which happens every time you use this deck. But how can you lose if they don't know you're running Eldrazi's? <laughs> and you're like, don't worry, I have Elves, not Eldrazi's. Yeah, so we're going to break down a little bit of this, and then we're going to get off of here. So first, we have card costs, give you a good breakdown of colors. You can see we have a pretty good split between all five colors here. We're heavy on the lands. It's intentional, and we're heavy on the artifacts. Yet again, intentional. They're all tapping for mana. And then, of course, creatures. We don't have as many instant sorceries because this deck isn't a spell slinger deck. Stick it for what it is. It's creatures. It's Eldrazi's. We want to get them out quick. You have to play with this mana curve. This is going to make a break, you guys. So try to figure out a way to help bring this mana curve down or just help get your cards out quicker. That's what it is about, Eldrazi's. Get them out quick and rule the day. So that, I hope, is a great way to explain how to build a Golos deck. I hope you guys learned a thing or two. I hope you guys loved this. I love doing this because it helps me, one, make my decks better because I get to make formats like this. Two, I get to teach people things, which I love. I love this game. And if I can teach people things about this game, that's awesome and that makes me super happy and of course three it's magic it's monsters what's more fun than that i'm super excited to be doing this channel i'm super excited that I have the opportunity to push through youtube thank you guys so much 